No, I thought it was the actual Battletech IP, and I was like, what? No, although that probably exists as a fan thing someplace. The Chaosium uh, YouTube channel has been running a series. They just uh, uploaded episode four, and I haven't watched it yet. It's a, it's a modern-day Cthulhu game called oh, nice. The God's Dream. So watching people play a modern game is a little... Uh, Takes some getting used to after a while. It's like, oh, I'm going to pull out my cell phone to do that. It's like, oh, shit, right? They're playing modern. <laughs> it, it plays very, very differently, for sure. Being able to, like, what's that monster? Let me just Google it. All righty. So uh, here we are, session 33 of uh, Masks of the Harley Othotep. Uh, the party um, has made their way to Cairo, um, trying to locate the second half of a of a artifact of a ward called the eye of light and darkness um hopefully be, with the two of those they'll have uh, a way to make things better uh by warding different areas that are important to the various cults uh during your investigations you have traveled out to uh to some of the pyramids outside of cairo uh, specifically to a place called the Bent Pyramid, uh, where stories were that this is where the Carlisle expedition changed. Uh, investigating the pyramid, uh, you found a secret passage, uh, and it led you into like an inner sanctum. Uh, there were like these carvings on the walls, a combination of mythos symbology and Egyptian hieroglyphics that uh, sort of cemented things that you had already knew. Uh, the locations as to where the, where the rituals will be taking place in, <clears throat> in Egypt, in Australia, in Kenya, and in China. Um, more, uh, more carvings that indicated the path of the upcoming solar eclipse. Uh, and not just the fact that there's an eclipse happening, but also there is a planetary alignment uh lending truth to the credo of the stars are right uh the sort of thing that'll only happen like once in any of your lifetimes and probably only once every couple hundred thousand years maybe uh, also uh some of the some of the paintings depicted uh Let me find my notes. Because I believe there were bas reliefs that also depicted um, the, the pregnant woman. The pregnant woman, yes. Yeah, the offspring. The offspring. Hypatia. No, not Hypatia, but that's who we assume it is. Uh, yes, one of the members of the Carlisle expedition. Yep. Um, and while you were uh, investigating this uh, this sanctum, these. Um, these like five foot tall pillars with these gems on top all suddenly 
flared up with light. Uh, and this... Uh, I'm going to use the word man. Uh, appeared. Uh, dressed in uh, dressed in a pharaoh's finery. Man-shaped. Man-shaped. Let's go with that. Um, who appeared uh, basically sitting on the throne. Um, Evelyn recognized him immediately as the Black Pharaoh. The air beside him on either side of him is just kind of like, like, almost like boiling and turning itself inside out, just uh, possibly as a result of his mere presence. Uh, and that is where we left off last time. So, Jamie? I'm just popping out of the car. Hold on a second. I'll be in Comunicado for two minutes. All right. Um, so, yes. So, this uh, human-esque figure is sitting on the thrones. Just kind of looking at each of you. Then he speaks to you. Miss hmm. Collins. Sorry, is he speaking in English? You hear him in English? Dr. Carter. Mr. Franklin. Mr. Poitrois. Mr. Sharp. I'm surprised you have made it this far. I am intrigued. You are tenacious, and perhaps a bit foolhardy. I feel like that should be rewarded. Of course, it would be foolish of me to reward those who stand against me. So, an offer. If you Abandon this foolish quest and serve me. I will give you whatever you wish. Perhaps to be reunited with loved ones. Mm, perhaps temporal power, perhaps magical knowledge. The choice is yours, whatever you wish. And then he kind of sits back in his throne, kind of waiting for you. I look at the people that have more knowledge about this. Like, aren't you supposed to say something now?
What's the catch? There is no catch. You agree to serve me, and I reward you. And you can just snap your fingers, wave your hands, or do something, chant something, and you can bring back someone who is passed on beyond the beyond this life, for example. If that is what you wish. And said person would come back as if nothing had happened, perfectly fine, healthy, hale, and all that. If that is what you wish. Miles I'm looks sorry, to everybody sir. else like he's actually struggling a little bit with that one as he hears that. Just to confirm, um, and Chris, not to, I'm sorry for, for having disconnected there, but um, Alvin has his gun pointed at him. If he didn't before, he slowly moves it towards him. Does he care? He doesn't seem to care. I would like my hand on either of my guns just in case. Okay. How should we address you? Hmm. I have many names. The Black Pharaoh will do. Black Pharaoh, sir. Is it true that the world is about to end? Hmm. I don't believe so. The world will be changed. I know my wish. Okay, so let's ask some basic questions here. One, are, are we prisoners here or are we free to go? Mm. I have yet to decide, to be honest. Okay. While you decide, could you indulge us as to how the world will change? It will become more entertaining. Is, is that what we are right now? We're entertaining to you? Mildly, yes. <clears throat> I heard you cough, so you're, you're not muted. Okay, because Evelyn had said that she knew her wish, and it just... Nobody reacted, so I'm like, oh, maybe I'm muted. Oh, well, I didn't hear that. I definitely did not hear that. I did, but he's waiting for you to actually state it. <laughs> Is he looking at her or still looking at Alvin? He's looking at all of you in turn as you kind of mull over his offer. I want you and your kind to leave this world for a thousand years. Hmm. I'm afraid that is not likely. Well, you did ask for my wish. 
So that is true. If it's not something you can do, I think there's a difference between what he doesn't want to do and can't do. He didn't say he had to want it. So that is what you wish in order to come and serve me. You said for us to give up this foolish quest. So that's what I'm asking for, for me to give up this foolish quest. Uh, just uh, for Evelyn, he specifically said give up this foolish quest and serve me. Did he? Because that's not what I heard. That yeah, that's what he down. Said. That is what he said, unfortunately. Yep. Oh, damn. But if it's only yeah. a thousand years... Chris, other than his obviously magical demeanor, is there anything that hints to the fact that I couldn't just kill him? There is not. Alvin's going to take a look at his surroundings, see if anything else other than, because he's been monopolizing their attention. Let's use those terms. Um, <laughs> considering, um, is there anything else that has changed? Um, no. Uh, you can give me a spot hidden roll, though. As I suppose anybody else who's looking around can as well. I probably should because I have absolutely no idea what to ask. I will luck that. Okay. You're only three off. Oh, holy. Is that a hundred? Uh, no, it was 10. Yay! So it's kind Almost of Almost as good. <laughs> right. Not even close. <laughs> double what you needed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly my double. You have to fight. Yeah, in, 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 in everyone else's defense, he is monopolizing our attention. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. All right. Evelyn is a bit focused. <laughs> Um, so for Alvin and Jerome, as you guys are, are talking, and he's basically just sitting there patiently waiting for you to, uh, to come to a decision. Uh, the air on both sides of him, where it's kind of like bubbling and turning in on itself, um, as you catch it, those are, those are distinct shapes beside him. Uh, it's not just like, it's not just like a random air movement or, or power radiating off of him. There are two distinct things, one on each side of him. What if we refuse to accept your offer? Hmm. Then you refuse. Will the game continue or will you stop it? That's a question for both the Pharaoh and the GM. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if we are fools, are you going to leave us to pursue our fool's errand, or is this going to get unpleasant? Before long, my queen will walk the earth again. My spawn will be born. 
And the skies will be poisoned and the gates shall be open. Wait. I, I am Wait. very curious as to whether a bunch of humans are capable of stopping this. Wait, you're queen? So you're not the one in charge? Every king has a queen. So yes, I suppose I am very curious as to whether you're actually capable. I'd say that my wish would be to continue that game. Maybe we can redeem ourselves. <laughs> Perhaps. Sorry, side question. Is Yorick actually here? Because I see him as disconnected and he's connected. I am here. I, I just had a problem with the internet as long as I was not home. So I miss bits of the starting conversation. So I'm trying to catch up. We fucked. I mean, I, I, I know we were we finished in front of the Dark Pharaoh. And he seems to have made you all the proposal, but I'm trying to piece out exactly what that was. The proposal, <laughs> Sorry about Chris, that. Chris, do you want to summarize that proposal? Yeah, the proposal is uh, what will it take to get you to give up this quest and serve me? I will, I will give you whatever you wish. So far, only one proposal has happened. Evelyn said, leave you and all your disciples for a thousand years was her offer yes that one i i, I got <laughs> i wonder from <laughs> where it came from no <laughs> because i didn't have the question <laughs> while this conversation is taking place alvin's trying to catch um miles's eyes and trying to subtly gesture to the shapes that he's noticed on either side of the pharaoh what kind of shape it is uh, it's very hard to make out. It's definitely something. Uh, the way it's moving, since you rolled so well on your spot hidden, the way it's moving is almost serpentine in nature. I don't know if that prompting would allow me to do another spot hidden check or... If not, I'm still going to at least look around to see what he might be intimating at. Um, so as you, uh, as you know, uh, Alvin kind of like motions with his eyes, kind of gets your attention, kind of motions with his eyes, and you and you look. Uh, once your attention is drawn to it, you can you can make it out, and you can give me a Cthulhu Mythos roll. Oh, um, be your work. Yeah, I got plenty of sanity. I think. Um, yeah, you're not sure what they're. They're definitely serpentine. They're they're. You're gonna guess they're bigger than a man. Just uh, it's hard to tell because a they're mostly invisible, and b they're kind of like writhing and undulating. I'll try to move to the side of the room to see with a different angle. Okay. Is there any hope for anyone who serves you to defend and protect humanity to ensure that your return will not be the end of it? <laughs> Those are people have tried in the past become your servant and plead for humanity hmm. they have it's amusing for a while but i suppose if you're not if you if you 
think that you're capable and beings far beyond the scope of mere humans have tried. I suppose you can go on with your small and pathetic and short lives. Return I mean, that might homes. have been true. That might have been true 20,000 years ago, but these are the modern times. Hmm. Perhaps you'd like to see what happened to those who came before you. See how they prospered. Uh, and he kind of gestures and one of the one of the bas reliefs kind of like shimmers um, and you see what looks like a, uh, like a group of investigators very similar to yourselves um, judging from the clothing and stuff uh, actually give me anthropology rules I is relent it, is it just him seeing it I uh, know he's like basically projecting it on the wall sort of thing Okay. You wanted anthropology? Anthropology. No. Oh, oh wait, no, yes. I, ah. I, I have been kicked out of a uh, foundry. <laughs> oh. I can get Dr. Carter. Thirty-three over one. All right, uh, Evelyn is apparently one of the only people who's made a study of anthropology. Well, <laughs> um, you're gonna guess. Um, just because you're gonna guess, maybe mid nineteenth century. So not terribly long ago no like 75 years ago yep um and yeah the you know as, as you're kind of watching there's no sound obviously as this bass relief kind of like morphs and molds into this uh, into this scene um but you see them they seem to be investigating uh ancient ruins uh, some of the some of the iconography and some of the glyphs look very similar to what you encountered in Peru, uh, mm. and some of what you saw on the on the uh, walls of this sanctum. Uh, and then the sky kind of turns dark, uh, and you see scores of these winged, gigantic, snake-like creatures. Uh, very similar to the one that attacked your hotel in China and descending from the sky. Uh, whereas, and then out of the ground around them, these twisted, diseased looking like mockeries of humanity with like elongated snouts and sharp claws kind of burst forth from the ground. And these twisting columns of just like amorphous black pus uh, erupt from the grounds around them and tear these people apart. Uh, I'm going to need everybody to give me a sanity roll. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, if we went through that scene without ever making a sanity roll, that would be a problem. Like, yeah. I don't know I would manage that. Look at all those rolls. Oh, look at you guys <laughs> all being successful. <laughs> uh, so the good news is you only lose four points of sanity each. Do we adjust that manually? Uh, yes. And that's that? just uh, adding to our previously lost, yeah, previously lost daily sanity. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm at yeah. five at the moment. <sighs> I'm at seven. <laughs> the main thing is none of you are... Uh... Uh, I don't seem to be able to adjust my own sanity for now. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. it for you. Thanks. 
The good Sorry, news is that. none of you have hit your daily limit, and it wasn't more than five in a single loss. Um, but uh, there is a, all of you have like an involuntary reaction. Uh, you know, you let out like a little like a little scream, or you know, you get the shakes, uh, the cold sweats. You know, all of, all of that sort of thing. All of that sort of like involuntary, like you know, Alvin, you probably like drop your gun. Um, as the, the members of this investigative party are just like torn to shreds. No, the Ferris Beast says. Mm. You are brave, as were they. Well, you ask us to serve you, but we still have a personal interest of preserving our species. So I see, I try to see if there is a middle ground we can reach. If you serve me well, I can ensure that you will survive. But you cannot ensure that our species will. I fail to see how that serves me in any way. Oh. If, you, if I'm going to take a deal, in... I'm going to make sure it serves me too. If the outcome is already um, decided, why, why, why do you want uh, us to to stop? Hmm. I am curious as to how far you will go. Knowing that your efforts are ultimately futile. So, so, so the base uh, of that curiosity for it to 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 be satisfied would would be to re refuse your offer. Well, the choice is yours. Humans have this fascinating ability to think that they matter. Chris, can I pick up my gun after a while? Uh, yep. And he does well, he not have any mind during this? He does not. Were you human at some point? Never. Did he sound insulted by that? Vaguely, yes. And why do you choose to use a human term of rulership in your name? Well, my followers granted me the title and it seemed the least I could do. Much as this form. But my understanding is, is that you wish to try to save your species. Well, that's what we've been working for. I mean, we've already been failing it so much. Let us try to keep it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. He you said you never were humans. Were you the one who built the machine that came before us that we see marked upon the stones? Oh, no, 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 no. But it serves a purpose. Are you, are you younger than that or older than that? It's interesting that your humans view time in such a linear fashion. Alvin, like, straight up asks, what does that mean? The the uh, the doctor w bit her, his lips to not ask that question <laughs> or a derivative of that because he's afraid he's going to show him and that will break his mind. <laughs> we existed before this world even cooled. We will exist after this world is the long dead. So why do you need to mess with us now? 
because I wish to. And were the one who made those machines your servants? No, they were not. But their abilities serve a purpose. And they were not human, I, I suppose. No. They are significantly older than your pathetic species. What were they? they were beings that resided on this planet many eons ago. Occasionally I miss them. Was was your rise the reason for their disappearance? No. Another one of your kind? Hmm. Perhaps. I don't keep tabs. But wait, so someone was here before humans? Humans are certainly not the first sentient species on this planet. Isn't that correct, Miss Collins? <sighs> yes. But let us say that I am. If it makes you feel better, I admire your bravery and your tenacity, knowing that everything that you do will amount to nothing. All of your dreams are doomed. All of your struggles are futile. And you and all that you love will perish. And yet, you get up every morning. Fascinating, really. Don't forget, everything dies. And Alvin takes a very, very slow and methodical bead on him. <laughs> I, he does at that point turn around to, uh, to face Alvin. It's like, Mr. Sharp, are you brave or stupid? I've been accused of both. Chris, can I use that momentary distraction to pull out my gun? Absolutely. I'll shoulder okay. my rifle. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Carter, show his hands. <laughs> uh, and everybody, everybody can give me a spot hidden roll. It's a nope. Not even a little bit. <laughs> he is very distracted. Well, yeah. hopefully I shoot him better than uh, I can spot stuff. To. All right. Uh, so, Alvin, uh, you notice two things with your uh, with your hard success. Uh, those shapes that were beside him are starting to move uh, kind of out and away from him. Trying to like move around to maybe get in like a flanking position on you. Ah, I thought they were like bodyguards. Okay. Uh, and the other thing that you notice uh, is this, uh, this kind of sickly glow is starting to grow around his hand. I only ever wanted to understand and protect my species. Is there any way that our interests match? He does not seem to be paying attention to you. Yeah, but I had to try. 
Is he having a stare down with Alvin? Uh, kind of. In a way. I mean, that would be giving Alvin way too much credit. I get that. <laughs> it's like... Uh, just give me one sec here. Let me throw some tokens on the map here for no particular oh, reason. No. <laughs> are those dragons? Uh, no. Those are, those are hunting horrors. Oh, shit. Those are the things that have been knocking on our barrier walls. Eek. How much does it, time does it take to put up a wall? Uh, like a minute. Okay, so two longs. <laughs> yeah, start chanting under your breath now. We'll keep them talking. That's way too many eyes. I'm pretty <laughs> sure if I'm casting a spell in the presence of that guy, he's gonna notice. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean I won't try, uh, but he's gonna notice. <laughs> yeah. Chances are good. All right. Uh, so, uh, Chris, yes, I feel, I, I, Alvin feels like he's got a little bit of support. I feel like Miles also pulled his gun. So I just want to confirm who here is has gotten weapons in hand right now. Uh, I think it's Jerome, Miles, and Alvin. Are you counting my cane? Specifically, not counting her cane. <laughs> my, uh, my. Uh, my sawed off shotgun is at my belt, but you've seen how fast I put it up last time. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, so the way initiative works is it goes by dexterity, uh, highest to lowest. Uh, but if you have a gun out and ready, you get a you get a bonus. Uh, it's actually it's like a plus. I think it's a plus 50 bonus. It's a significant bonus for having your gun ready to go. Uh, which does, in fact, mean that Jerome gets to go first. If he would like to do anything. Well, are the aurors uh, still invisible? They are. So I have not seen them move at all. Correct. In that case, I won't be the first one to shoot because I'm a soldier, not an officer. So let somebody else die first. Okay. All right, that will take us two miles. Okay. Sorry. All right. Um, I am going to shoot him with my big badass. Was it a carbine? My big rifle. Okay. My lever carbine. Yeah. So I just click the weapon. Yeah. Uh, target target him first. Like mouse over him and hit T to target him. I realize like we haven't done combat in like twenty some sessions. I think I did it. We didn't have a combat yeah. in Hong Kong. Well, no, uh, and since the invisible octopuses. Yeah, and yeah. I missed yeah. that one. Perfect. And then, yeah, on your uh, on your combat tab and your character sheet, just click the weapon. Okay. There you go. Point blank base range. There you go. And then just click in the chat where it says "roll firearms." Ooh, a hard success. Nice. Do I click the roll damage tab in there? Uh, yes, and if you want to spend 16 luck, you can get that to an extreme success. Yes, please. Okay. How do I do that? Uh, so if you uh, left click the, the green part where it says firearms, rifle, one bonus die, so on and so forth. So... Sorry, left click or right click? Uh, left click that. You should get a drop down menu. Yeah. And then it says increase success extreme 16 luck. Yep, yeah, there it is. Thank you. Perfect. Did I do it successfully? Yep, yeah, and then roll damage. 
Evelyn, this is where you are. Um, you might want to shy away from now. Bullets are flying against the <laughs> evil. Yeah, I see that. All right. Ah, uh, ignore that. He's immune to unconscious. Um, so yeah, so the, there's a there's a crack of a rifle, uh, and uh, the black pharaoh kind of like steps back, uh, and you can see like that power that he's starting to gain in his hands just starts to gain faster and faster. He is he's quite badly wounded. Yeah, very nice. Fourteen damage. Um, there, just so folks are aware, the reason why you want to get the um, critical successes with firearms is because it does impale damage, uh, which is you max out the damage and then you roll the damage a second time. So, yeah, I don't know if I could have rolled better. I saw the double ones on my sixes, and I'm like, ah. Uh. Yep. Uh, but because the the rifle does two d six, when you impale with it, it does twelve plus two d six, so fourteen damage which pretty much would have killed quite a few of you and badly, badly wounds him. Uh, so which... let's give it a try. So that'll take us to, uh, to Alvin. So can I... Everyone. Think... Yeah, if Jerome would like to jump in, he certainly can. Okay, oh, go you. ahead, Jerome. I was going to say, you all get three guesses to what Alvin was going to do, but you only need one, but whatever. <laughs> Sorry, how do I target? Uh, so uh, over, uh, most over him, uh, you do have him targeted successfully. So there, and then in the chat, uh, you'll see a little thing that's got like a little like base range, point blank range, and then a clickable button that says roll firearms. Yes, perfect. Okay. Yep. So hard success. Uh, you yeah. can spend four luck to get it to extreme if you like. Why not? All right. Do it. And then click the little image. Oof. Luck can be recovered. Our lives, maybe not. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So, as, uh, as he starts to, you know, as the power starts to, uh, to, to grow in, a, in his hand, uh, you know, fairly quickly, two rifle shots um, drop, uh, and a couple of things happen. Uh, one, uh, the entire the 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 lights from the the gems go out, uh, leaving only like your little flashlights to to show what's happening. Uh, there is a tearing of flesh. Uh, one second. I wonder if I can find a picture for this. Give me half a second here. There's a theory of flesh. Let me find a picture of theory of flesh. <laughs> it's probably not. I don't want to see your Google history. Sad face. <laughs> the the two worst Google history is if your house has a DM and a, an an author, like someone. Yes. Writes. Yeah. You end Put up on a list. Together. Put those two together and you're on so many lists. And then they realize you're mostly harmless. How to decompose a body in 15 days or less? <laughs> 15 days or less? <laughs> the kind of thing you see on that computer. Weirdly specific. <laughs> yep, it is. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So there's a tearing of flesh, um, and the body, you see the body start to twitch on the floor. Those two invisible things just disappear. They are no longer there. There's no roiling air. There's no bubbling burn. They are, they are gone. Uh, but the, the body where it drops, it starts to elongate. Uh, and you can hear the sinews breaking and the bones cracking as the body gets like kind of like longer and bulkier uh, and then 
kind of like out of the out of the neck kind of like through the head and then eventually engulfing the entire head is this massively long bleeding tongue um, and as the the body starts to contort and gets back up I'm gonna need everybody to make sanity rules and you really really want to make these this is the black furrow we're talking about yes his uh, his avatar is gone. It is now Naharli Othotep himself. Yeah, yeah. You blew his mouth off. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, fuck. Oof. Wow. Yay. Miles regains sanity at this point. <laughs> Okay. So for Alvin and Evelyn and Miles. All right. Good news. Uh, the good news is you guys are probably only going to go indefinitely insane. Only. Yay. Where is the sanity loss here? Oh, okay. So those of you who succeeded, only lose Ooh. 10. <laughs> and that and so you broke me. up there and lost what? 10. Yeah. That that takes me well beyond my daily limit. I am six over. And this is for the people who succeeded. Yes. Yep. I'm five I'm over my room. daily now. Uh, for Jerome and Dr. Carter. Oh. Uh, they both lose 84. What? 84 what? 84 sanity? 84 sanity. Oh, that, was, that was bad. Um, <laughs> I'm under zero. Okay, Holy hold shit. on, hold on. Can they spend luck before now that they know that? No, eh? It's done now. You can't spend luck on a sanity roll. I would have spent luck if I could have spent luck, even if I didn't know the, 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 the impact, but can spend luck and sanity. So, uh, Alvin, uh, I need you to make an intelligence roll. And you got to fail it. 84. All right. Hard success. I'm not on my daily limit, if that matters. Uh, that's why you're not insane like everybody else. You, are, you have actually, you have recognized what has happened. Uh, you are going to be insane for like an hour or so. Um, Dr. Carter and Jerome uh, are beyond saving. Uh, Miles and Evelyn uh, are going to need significant time in a sanitarium. But Alvin, um, the last thing you remember, everybody else, like, your minds just break. The, the, the fact that you have come face to face, like, not just with an avatar, but with Naharli Othotep itself. The, the walking embodiment, the crawling chaos, the dark pharaoh, the bloody tongue, uh, and various other names. The bloody tongue. Yeah, that seems appropriate now. Yeah. Yep. Um, you're, Still you're, shot it. yeah, your, your <laughs> brains just shut off. Uh, you are, uh, basically just catatonic, like in fear as far as you can run. And then like getting your fingernails down to bloody stumps, trying to claw your way through the wall. Uh, just trying to get away from this thing. Uh, That's but, amazing. 
Uh, Alvin, the last thing that you remember in the last little tiniest bit of brain power that you have left uh, is him looking at you and saying, good luck. Uh, and then he disappears. And then my mind turns off. And then your mind turns off. Did you realize that Alvin of... didn't have a chance to pull the trigger yet? <laughs> that might be the thing he thinks about now. All right. Uh, and I will get uh, Alvin, Miles, and Evelyn to each give me a d10 roll. I don't know how to undo this. Hold on. Oh, uh, so Miles and Evelyn, on top of everything else, are going to pick up a phobia. Uh, oh, that really doesn't make sense. Alvin can roll again. Just kind of to see what form your intent takes. Oh, a 10. That's a zero for no insanity? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> All right. So Evelyn and Miles can both roll percentile dice for me. Oh, God. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, one of those nights. Too bad I didn't roll a one there just to see the perfect symmetry. <laughs> Chris, just to just to summarize here, we shot him so hard that his avatar exploded and he came out. Yes. Uh huh. All right, and uh, Alvin can also roll percentile dice. So, um, after significant time has passed, um, uh, Alvin, you kind of come to first. Uh, everybody else, um, uh, everybody else is basically very, very broken. Uh, very broken. Um, it will take several, several hours for you to be able to get any sort of response at all from uh, from Evelyn and Miles. Uh, and the most response you can get from Dr. Carter and Jerome is to kind of gently lead them uh, in a very kind of zombified state. Uh, but when people kind of come to, um, for, for Evelyn and Miles, basically after several hours, your, uh, your mind is slightly repaired. Uh, until you get treatment, if you suffer even a single point of sanity loss for any reason, you will snap again. Oof. Uh, until you until you actually get some help, um, Alvin. Uh, the same thing. You really though only need to get like a day or two with nothing trying to fuck with you. Uh, Doctor Carter and Jerome need long term commitment to a psychiatric facility. Uh, but Evelyn, when you come to, you also, uh, because of your study of the, uh, of the occult, um, you realize that, you know, the Harley Altotep is obviously a shapeshifter. Uh, there's a lot of stories about the Egyptian gods being part animal, part human. Um, how do you know that hawk flying overhead isn't actually the Harley Altotep? 
how do you know that that cat that crossed your path how do you know that's not reporting back to him or is him uh you have zoophobia which is a fear of animals ah. is it a fear if it's justified <laughs> That is a rational reaction to the world around me. Yeah. Um, Miles, um, you have. Do you, you'll, uh, oh. um, if you can't see it, it's probably not dangerous. Uh, unfortunately, the harsh light of daylight throws everything uh, out into the open. Uh, but if you're someplace where it's dark, uh, you can't see it, and it can't see you. Uh, so you currently suffer from uh, phenogophobia, a fear of daylight. Uh, and Elvin, uh, Elvin, you know that. Um, you know, you only have so many days until uh, until this event comes to pass. Um, you know, uh, and then you know, days days are important. Numbers are important. You know, there's a there's a reason why there's you know the God created the earth in seven days and, or six days and then rested. Um, there's so many. You know, it takes so long for the sunlight to reach the earth. You have uh, where is it here? Uh, arithno, arithomania, an obsessive preoccupation with numbers. Gotcha. Uh, and for those of you with uh, with phobias and uh, and manias, um, as long as you are as long as you are hanging on to a tether of sanity, it's a role playing thing, but it's not obsessive. Uh, if you go insane again, it rears its ugly head, and you act in a inappropriately obsessive manner so evelyn you don't really like animals anymore but you're not obsessive about it if you snap and go insane your zoophobia will rear its ugly head in all of its glory okay and uh, in the worst possible way is my understanding and in the worst possible way like you'll do what it's a phobia so like you will you will do whatever you can to get away from it uh, the same with uh, with daylight for miles. Uh, the mania, like Alvin, you're like, okay, you, you like keeping track of things, you like numbers, you you like looking for the significance of numbers. But if you go insane, then you start looking for the patterns in the numbers and pulling out the red string and the conspiracy wall. That is officially the character I had with the shortest live. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, so when you guys come to hours later, um, where are we? Uh, you are still in the sanctum, uh, and the uh, the doorway is open. Jerome's I frothing at the mouth. Yeah, I'm gonna look for my allies and try to shake some sense into them. Chris, my understanding is I wake up like almost hours before everyone else is sensible. Uh, you will wake up. Actually, it's a D10 hour. Oh, only an hour. I was like, no. <laughs> that seems appropriate. I'm fine. Sweet, you need a D10. One hour. That's not so bad. One is a good number. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so like it's going to take like several hours before you get any sort of response from the others. Cogent response. But can I kind of herd them back to the cars and get us back home? Yes. And I will do that. So at least they come to like I'm like, don't worry, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, and I get them back to the uh the hotel.
and I order tea, I guess. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, so eventually, like Miles and Evelyn, you are as good as you're gonna get without some, uh, without some, uh, some time spent getting treatment. Chris, do we know we need treatment? They they know that they are not right. Like they're they're when they're when they're lucid. Uh, they are they are aware that they're not right uh, and Alvin is very aware uh, that the rest of your party um, is possibly even a danger to themselves he's gonna wait like a day or two see if everyone comes back but only miles and um only miles and Evelyn actually come back right uh to some semblance of their normal selves yes oh and incidentally uh because this is the first time alvin has actually gone insane uh, he gets five points added to his Cthulhu Mythos skill, and everybody else gets one point. Damn it! I was trying to avoid that. I had zero. I didn't have to roll ever. <laughs> Sorry, how much do we get? Uh, one point. Yeah, I can't add it. Oh, there you go. I was yep. going to say, can we add it, or do we have to be in development phase? There you go. Should be able to add one on. I'll add it on for Alvin. Do I have to click development phase? Uh, yeah, click the development tab, and then you can put it in under the rightmost column. Well, yeah, the grayish. Yeah. That went about as well as we could have hoped. I mean, I can disagree. I, th I don't think that went badly. Uh, as Mark said, I think that went as well as we could have. Yeah, probably. It's just a half party wipe. <laughs> yeah. So wait, did we permanently lose two characters due to their due to their sanity loss? Totally did. Yes. If you're sanity... But that's an in-character discussion, right? We have to yeah. talk about what we're going to do with our friends here who are... We really state. should, yeah. Yeah. I drool. <laughs> I turn to Evelyn and say, I don't know what to do. Uh, yeah. Evelyn seems to be relying on her cane a lot more than usual. Um, and she seems to be sitting with Dr. Carter trying to get him to drink tea. That's Dr. That's Carter is, is writing in his book over and over and over and over and over and over and over. He's just writing down stuff. The tongue, the tongue, the tongue. And he's drawing mountains. Miss Collins, I don't know what to do. She'll, for a moment, she'll stop trying to coax the pen and paper 
pocket of Dr. Carter's hands and just turn her head slowly and look at Alvin. I don't know what makes you think I do. I mean, they may need help that I can't give them. They do need help. They need professional help. They need round-the-clock care. In Cairo? Somewhere. Cairo, Wait, there was, there England, the United States. There was an insane asylum, wasn't there? For there was an asylum that one of the that people in the Carl Island expedition, expedition went in to Shanghai. In Shanghai. Okay. Ideally, not Shanghai, because Ofang is still there. By the way, are we still in a car or back at a hotel or what? At the hotel. Yeah. Okay. I assume we're all back at the hotel before you and I come to any kind of awareness. Yeah, yeah when, I was I was when, once everybody's in kind of like a safe environment. I make sure that all the uh, curtains are drawn so that it's as dark as possible. What are you doing? It's safer this way. Okay. Look, there's three of us, so at least that's a small blessing. It's not four. I mean, it's not two. That's what I mean. It's not two. But we need to find them help, and we still need to find the eye to stop that thing. Chris, I I'm was... going to call. Go ahead. Up. I don't understand why you started shooting at it. It was pretty clear that it said it was going to kill all of humanity, no matter what we did at any point in time, ever. And that it was toying with us. And if we weren't going to agree to his demands, odds are he was going to kill us right then and there. Instead, we managed to kill whatever it was in. <clears throat> and, yeah. I don't know if we bought ourselves time. I don't remember that part. Don't you remember his green glowing hand of magic that was there before we started shooting? I remember him asking. And I remember telling him that I would take his offer if he left for a thousand years. And then I remember gunfire. And then I don't remember anything. Chris, can I get our, our friend and ask him, I need to place the name of the most reputable sanatorium we can think of, or that's in Cairo? Um, certainly. There, he, he can tell you like right off the top of his head that there are, there are two. <laughs> there, is, uh, there is the mosque, uh, the mosque of Ibn Talan, um, which, is a, uh, which is a hospital for the mentally ill. Uh, and there is the Hospital for the Insane, which is the primary asylum for Cairo. 
the mosque is where we met. No, you met him. At, you met him at our mosque. The mosque of Imtilan is where he told you the. Oh, that's what it was. Apparently, the the the, the Brotherhood of the Bloody Tongue or Blood, Brotherhood of the Dark Pharaoh uh, is interested in something at that mosque. Ooh. Right. So not. <laughs> Not there. We shouldn't leave them there, no. That seems cruel. Although we should go there and get whatever it is. Well, they're not going to stay there. We're just we're we're going to check them in. Maybe they'll, they'll hopefully they'll get better. But we need to find the other half of the eye, and then we need to go to the next place, and they can come with us. Come with us to where, Kenya? I, I haven't got thought in that far ahead, but we're not going to leave them in Cairo. No, we should send them either to a specialist in England or wherever Bill is, or well, England isn't that much the safer. States so Luther can take care of them. Or at least that's visit a great them. idea. He could at least visit them and keep an eye on them and make sure they're safe. But they can't do that trip alone. They should definitely not do that trip alone. No. No, they should not. Miles, you've been very quiet. I don't know what to do with them. I'm not a medical professional, but and I don't know who these people are you're referring to in America. So yeah, if you Luther, think that sorry. Luther was a friend of Jackson. believe they served together at some point. Is he a medical professional? No, Luther was a pilot. Then I would suggest if you think that being, if, if you think our friends would be better off at least being close to those who you trust in the United States, then perhaps they should, we should get them treatment in the United States close to where they reside so that at least our friends can keep an eye on them. I don't know where Jerome is from. Dr. Carter was from Switzerland, but he was teaching in England. But we met him in We met him in Peru. Did we not meet him until we got to Peru? Everyone got to Peru. You're right. You're right. I freely admit I do not know which countries have the best health care for this matter. So I'm going to defer because I don't really think I can offer anything. Well, I'm sure. I mean, I mean, keeping them here certainly would not be a good idea, I don't think. No. Keeping them someplace. The third world, and th there's a thing around. I'm sorry? Third has a gun. He can keep them safe. Sorry, who can keep them safe? Luther. He was a soldier. Then if there's a way to uh, confirm where exactly Luther is right now, then perhaps we can uh, have our friends here um, put under the finest care wherever Luther is residing currently. Luther went back to his home in New York. 
He had a bit of an accident. with someone who shriveled his arm. Luther is aware of what's going on. Luther was in Peru, yes. And with us until we... He was with us in England. And then we went to China and he went back home. And it sounds like we're going to New York City. We can't afford to go to New York City. We don't have that kind of time. There's not enough days left. Then we are going to be leaving our friends where? Here? No, I think that we can put them up here for 15 days while we try to figure out where the eye is. And then when we decide what our next step is, we hire someone to take them to New York. We need to find someone we can trust to take them to New York. Is anyone else hearing that, or is it just me? Is it my kids who are suddenly like... No, I no. That. no it's <laughs> York and some Pokemon. I, heard that. <laughs> I don't know what Dr. Carter's saying, but it's not making any sense. <laughs> he was saying something about pocket monsters. I don't know what he's talking about. I mean, bust into stings and they start making noise, and it doesn't make sense. <laughs> we need to find someone we can trust to take them back to New York. I don't think I trust anyone here. Once we have the other half of the eye and we start heading to the places we need to go, whatever is chasing us will not be chasing them. So yes, we need someone we can trust, but we need them trust and get them to New York. It should not be, they shouldn't be accosted because we're the ones that are dangerous. Causing trouble. Yeah, that's what I Now look, the one, two, three of us should figure out where that eye is. That is something we didn't get closer to and we need that critically to stop that thing. What other leads do we have in the city right now? <sighs> One. What, the other pyramid? No, the, the lady and the boy, right? In that village or wherever? Oh. Faraz? There was an Omar. There's a Warren. We know of people 
We don't there's, know. There's people. what Nuri, some some woman named Nuri and her son by the middle pyramids in some town. Yes, Nuri Nuri's son worked for the Carlisle expedition. I mean, other than that, I'm not sure what else is there here unless we go back into the pyramid or if there's something... No, no, we're not doing that. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Miles, but I, the pyramid seems like a bad idea. This entire... This entire... Uh, endeavor it seems like a bad idea, and yet we're already waist deep, if not higher in it. Someone has to. I'm just trying to figure out what is left for us in Cairo that would uh, be a benefit. I agree with you. We we chase down that lead. See if he knows where the other part of the eye is. That's all we can hope for. Since he was working with them. Let us set up our friends to be comfortable for the next so often. And then let's go find the fleet. Because we can't leave them here unattended. No. No, we cannot. And Evelyn, I know you don't want to be, don't want this responsibility, but with the doctor gone, we're going to lean on you a little bit for direction. For direction? Well, you're the closest thing we have to a scholar on this stuff. Alvin looks at um, at Miles and then kind of points to himself as like, you don't really think we should be making decisions for the magical stuff, do you? And I'm sorry to say, but the magical stuff seems to be most of it. Miles, no disrespect, unless you want that responsibility. I'm an amateur scholar at best. I do not have the flair for languages that Dr. Carter has. That is my primary limitation. Well, we're now down two people, so we're all going to have to pull a little more weight in areas that we might not be normally as familiar or comfortable with if we're going to continue on with this. Well, if you can find me a magical spell that'll teach me new languages, that would be lovely. Mm, I'll be looking for that. There's dictionaries. There are dictionaries. We made use of them when we were in New York. And then well, there build. you go. A non-magical way to learn languages. It just takes a long time. Mm. Okay, Miles, Ellen, let's build. consider ourselves with our friends first. Let's get them some more space. And we can argue about languages and magic, because we're going to do that anyway, on the way to go see this kid. So what do you propose we do if Evelyn is not comfortable with finding them a place here in Cairo? Just a temporary place, I said, right now. 
temporary place, whichever one has the employees who speak better English. I was going to go with the ones that the cult is less interested in. Yes, which is likely the... Not the mosque. The asylum. Yes. Can we agree between the three of us to put them up for a few days? Let's say 15 days at tops before we decide to move on, take them with us, or send them to New York. We can't take them with us. We can argue about that in the 15 days that we give ourselves. I mean, they might come too. I mean, you took they hours. might. They might. That's possible. I can hope. Dr. Carter has a brilliant mind. I can hope. I personally don't have any issue with that. We're in agreement. Let's do that. Chris, second thing, we've all yep. lost time. Are we the same day? Because we are assuming we lost an hour <laughs> here or there. I just realized that we like... What day is it? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's 2023 and there's robots and... <laughs> one color. Carter looks the same though. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, the future. It, it's like super early in the morning uh, on the 20th of May. So you, you lost several hours, but. Basically, it's the next morning. It's like three o'clock in the morning as you guys are discussing. Because I, oh, so I don't think anybody wants to go to sleep. Um. I think the only one who's comfortable right now is Miles. <laughs> and even he isn't yeah. comfortable because people keep trying to turn the lights on. Just, uh, Miles, yeah, this is a very strange phobia to have considering it's Cthulhu. Yeah. <laughs> Miles is fine with artificial light. It's the harsh light of daylight that drives things oh, to the surface. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Okay, even I misunderstood that. Yeah. Because... I mean, Evelyn's not going to sit there trying to get Dr. Carter to drink tea in the dark. <laughs> okay, so we'll do that tomorrow. We just need to... Alvin was about to say sleep, and he changes his mind. He says, last to the morning. <laughs> yep, that seems appropriate. Right. Well, I guess the important question is, is anybody going to try to sleep? I think Alvin is unfortunately, with all the trauma he's just gone through, is going to eventually nod off in a chair somewhere. But he's not looking for sleep. That makes sense. God knows when Jaime has a bad day and he's emotionally tired. Whether he wants to or not, he'll sneak. I, I, I also have not seen the Harley Ophiteps, right? So, <laughs> guessing that's an exhausting experience. Oh, look at all those daily sanity loss counters restarted. Yeah. My daily is only eight now. It used to be eleven. Ouch. Yep, because as your sanity drops, so does your daily. Uh-huh. Oh, I know. I think my daily was eighteen. Jesus! <laughs> it is now Mine's 16. down to, mine's oh, down to nine now. Man. Yep. Uh, and Holy yeah, and even like, uh, like for for Miles and Evelyn, um, not so much for uh, for Alvin, uh, but for the two of you, uh, like it is it, you are rested, but it was not a it was not a good rest. Your your minds were just constantly um, assailed by the vision of what you saw, the, what you know is coming, 
uh, the knowledge that, you know, it literally, if you guys don't stop this, nobody will. Um, there, there's no doubt at all about what is in store for humanity. Um, given the fact that both of you have some Cthulhu knowledge and what happened in that throne room was like the tiniest fraction of Nahar Leothotep's actual power. Uh, if he manifests fully on Earth, and that's kind of the, the spiral you find yourselves in as you, as you rest. Chris, you said I made my intelligence check, and thus I am the only one who realized what really happened. Could you indulge me as to, to explain what really happened? Um, basically, he's uh, he was contained in a in a kind of like a human form, for lack of a better term, which makes him significantly weaker. Uh, but by kind of like rupturing that, uh, you basically brought his uh his actual visage to the to the forefront oh you're muted oh you you burst his human balloon and you let all the helium out uh <laughs> in a in a way yes with your with your newfound <laughs> with your newfound knowledge of the cthulhu mythos <laughs> Um, yes, uh, uh, you recognize that Naharli Othotep, like, you guys have been on the, the trail of various cults for a while. He's known by different names in different areas. The, the bloated woman, the, the bloody tongue, uh, the dark pharaoh, uh, lord of bats, and many others. Um, and you would guess that there's probably a form that goes for each of those. So he's got several forms. You just happen to disrupt one of them and uh, it kind of brought the full thing to view. Chris, what bothers Alvin is that if all it took was his human shell to be burst, why didn't he do that himself? Why didn't he just roam around as Naharli Othotep? Interesting question. You can make a Cthulhu Mythos roll. Do I have to? That's <laughs> what so happens when you ask questions. I'm going to say, if you ask these kinds of questions. I used to not have to roll those. <laughs> yeah. That almost was zero, zero. Uh, I mean, you could, you could spend uh, 42 luck. Pass. Pass. Okay. You know you want. <laughs> okay, so that's yeah. the only question that he he's gonna have mulling over the next day. I think that priority one is to get our friends. Well, we check them to make sure that see if they're sensate, which they are not, and then we get them to the asylum. Okay. Is that uh, difficult is that to put to have someone committed, or just because they're drooling, it's enough? Uh, it is not it is not super difficult. Basically, in this day and age, since you don't have an actual an actual doctor to uh, to sign them over for institutionalization, um, it's as long as you can pay. That's what matters. That's gross. Yep. And yet. And then we're going to follow Miles's advice. We're going to go interview the. Uh, Nuri. Okay. Um, so just so you guys are aware, the um, the hospital for the insane in Cairo, it is a it is a very cramped, very primitive looking structure, um, but it does house an average of five thousand inmates. Five thousand. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and uh, you guys can make uh, psychology rolls, I guess. And what was the name of the place? It is called the Hospital for the Insane. Okay. Sorry, what kind of role? Uh, psychology. I still can't get over that we lost 87 sanity. 84. That makes it better, Chris. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, Evelyn, um, just as, as you're looking at this place and as you're, as you're getting them checked in and kind of like, you know, paying for them to stay for, you know, a week or two. Um, 15 days. Yeah, the the condition the conditions here are not great. Uh, it is primitive. It is crowded. It is noisy. Uh, you guys can hear the screams of the uh, of the patients kind of echoing through the walls. Uh, it is not conducive to uh, to health and well being. And Evelyn, you're pretty sure that this is not a this is not a hospital. This is a place to keep the insane people off the streets. Yep. Um, partway through the transaction, uh, Evelyn is going to change her mind about leaving them here. Very Alvin, vocally. Alvin follows whatever Evelyn says. She's the not boss. here. She's a smart one. Not here. I am not leaving Dr. Carter in this place. The other option is the, the mosque. Mm -hmm. And we will go there next. I am not leaving him in this place. This is not... This is not a hospital. Would a mosque be willing to pick them up? This is a storage facility. I'm surprised with the fed every day. Sorry, what, Miles? I couldn't hear you over the screaming upstairs. Would a mosque be willing to um, care for our friends? Maybe. I think it's theoretically, the there are. If it's a mosque mosque, there's still a religious order, and most religious orders are charitable toward people in their condition. So we'll see. It has to be better than this. Can't hurt, certainly. Chris, we head to the second institution. All right. Uh, the mosque. Is this is the one where we had that private conversation with that gentleman, correct? Uh, no, this is a different mosque. Same, same principle, but different mosque. Yeah. Found some convenient pictures of the mosque, actually. Uh, this is this is actually the the actual mosque of Ibn Talun. Uh, it is the oldest mosque in Cairo. Um, so, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I have a note on that. I wasn't sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so as you uh, as you approach it, it is a very traditional mosque. Um, so it's got like the uh, the uh, the minarets and everything. Um, much like the hospital, uh, as you, you know, kind of make your way in, and they, they they are surprisingly not necessarily welcoming, uh, but uh, they they definitely allow you allow you entrance. Uh, but you can hear the shrieks and the wails coming from within, uh, which is par for the course for early twentieth century medical care. Um, but the, uh, the, the doctor who meets you is an actual doctor. Um, and 
this place definitely seems more of a uh, more of a, a more of a place of healing um, regardless of uh, you know any religious affiliation okay we leave them here right This seems better. If they're willing to take them in. I mean, so far, everyone's been willing to take them in as long as we pay. Pretty much. I'm more interested if they could get help. And is he is are there psychiatrists at this point? Um, no, they're basically falls under doctors for the most part. Right. Okay. But he is an actual physical doctor. Yes. Okay. He's not a doctor of anthropology. He's no. not like Doctor Carter. <laughs> no. Doctor Al Dahabi. Okay. Okay, we leave them here and we head for the discussion because we need to get our friends help and the only way we can get them help is to get everything we need and then get them to the US. All right. Um before we start checking the next whatever we check we should send a telegram back. To who, their loved ones? Mm, not precisely. No, we should send a telegram to Ramsey so that he can find someone here. who can escort them back to the United States. He can do that while we're hunting for the rest of what we're hunting for. And hopefully by the time we're finished, he'll have some. Makes sense. It's not a detour. It's 20 minutes. Send the telegram. Yeah, that's easily done. Telegraphs are sent all the time. Uh, and then you guys are heading to El Wasta? I believe so. That's the other mosque? Uh, no, El Wasta is, is a, the other one? No. It's a... It's a little village a few hours up the Nile. Where they're near in her son. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes. Um, Robin looks at Evelyn during the trip and says, normally the doctor starts these conversations because it's about archaeology. Mm -hmm. You're good at talking to people, aren't you? I'm good at talking to suspects. Oh. All right. I will see what I can do. As long as they're able to speak English or 
We have our translator friend. Vanish very, very slowly. Do we have a translator with us? Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. Perfect. Never mind. I won't worry about it. I was going to say, my Arabic is barely passable. <laughs> but you have some. Alvin, yeah, Alvin doesn't no know how to spell. Character sheet. <laughs> yeah, Alvin does not know how to spell Arabic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the travel is quiet and eventful. Uh, the uh, the little village of El Wasta, um, oh, more of a town really, uh, situated a couple hours, um, but seven miles south of the uh, of the pyramid at Medium. Uh, it's like late afternoon when you arrive. Uh, and there are, I mean, there's a couple of merchants and functionaries. There's a, it seems like there's a, a little bit of a, like a staging base for the pyramids that are further, further along. Uh, so it's a, it's like a village, but like a bustling village. Uh, and you're trying to sort of sell it. So we're trying to find a woman named Nuri. Yes. Do you have uh do you happen to have a last name? I she has a don't. child. I think Evelyn would have taken Dr. Carter's notebook when he finally fell asleep. How much of it makes sense, I don't know. But she'll definitely like flip through and see if there's any note as to a last name. Uh, there is not. Nope. Nope, I see that. Do you know anything about the Carlisle expedition? Um, I've read about them in the newspaper. She has, yes. she has... Sorry? There was a boy who was a local guide for them, I believe. So I don't know if that would ring a bell, if that made any newspapers here. Uh, perhaps that'll help narrow it down. Um, you'd be an older boy then. Yes, and the boy is this Nuri's son. All right. Uh, I'll see what I can find. Right, so I will get uh, whoever has the lowest luck can make a luck roll. Uh, mine is 59. 43 for me. I don't know if Alvin's back yet. Uh, Alvin has 49. So I'm the lowest. Yep. Yep. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you guys with your translator spend significant time asking around. Uh, a lot of the people are very. Uh, kind of like loose-lipped, or not loose-lipped, uh, very tight-lipped, especially around foreigners. Um, the, some of them, like a couple of them are like, oh, Nori, 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 yes. And then they send you in like a direction and there's nobody named Nori there. Um, but finally, uh, as, uh, as the, the sun is setting and it's starting to get a little cool on the desert nights, uh, you are directed to a tiny hovel. You're told that uh, this woman, Nori, uh, once took care of a foreign guest uh, uh, a few years ago. Uh, and the description uh, of, the, of this foreign gentleman max, uh, matches uh, Jackson. 
Oh, sorry. Matches Brady. My bad. Uh, so, in the in the dark of the night, you make your way to this uh, this little hovel. There's a like a little fire going outside. Um, there's a youngish man, probably probably in his late twenties, kind of like stirring the pot over the fire. Um, you can see as you get closer that his uh, his right arm and right shoulder uh, and are missing, and uh, a, there there's a good chunk of his the right side of his face that has also been gouged away. Oh dear. To be clear, Chris, we were not expecting this, right? This is not something that I missed. Nope. You can see, like, as you approach, he kind of, uh, he moves so that to kind of, like, hide the right side of his body, the, the, the part that's been, like, deformed. Um, and just kind of, like, watches you as you approach. Alvin nudges uh, Evelyn. Oh. Um, Nuri, yes? No, your mother's name is Nuri. He nods. My name is Evelyn. What's yours? He just he kind of looks at you. Uh, Ubaid. Ubaid? I think you worked for some people we know. And we're trying to find information about what they were working on. I, I don't work anymore. Well, I mean... If you're telling us things, I suppose technically you'd be working for us. If you're able to help. Mm, I don't work anymore. <clears throat> the only work we're asking you to do is to tell us things. Maybe show us some things on a map. Make a persuade roll. Ooh, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have enough luck to fill that in, just in case you were wondering. You could push the roll. Uh, I could, but I have 10% in it. What happens if I push? Uh, if you succeed, then you fail. succeed. Uh, if you push yes. and fail, um, odds are he's, he's already quite wary of you. He's probably going to completely clam up. Yeah. Um...
Well, um, if persuading with words isn't going to work, uh, Evelyn will turn to the true American way and pull out her wallet and just start laying dollar bills on the table. Um, make a, let's call it a credit rating roll. <laughs> I'm not great in that either. <laughs> yeah, I Don't can't worry, keep the doctor that up. was good at all of those. Yeah, yeah, I can't keep that up forever. Forever. Um, Actually, how much is it that you can spend in a day? Uh, depends on your wealth rating, so you don't really have to worry about it with, uh... Right, but when I'm looking at my spending level in cash, I'm just curious. Uh, it's based off of your credit rating. Well, do we have sort of a communal credit rating because of the, uh, the trust fund from Ramsey? Kind of. You've, you've got significant money at your disposal. Uh, it's really just a, the, the role is basically seeing whether how whether Evelyn looks like she knows what she's doing or whether she's just like putting a bunch of money down and if he doesn't do anything, putting a bunch more down. I don't think she'd do a bunch. I mean, she's been on the other side of this conversation enough times. Um, but she's probably, you know, showing a bit more money than she needs to, for sure. Definitely not as skilled at being on this side of the negotiating table. I'm getting used to my new glasses. Is your base a 35 or a 55? A 35. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, when you finally get to a certain amount, uh, he kind of, like, takes it slowly. Ask your questions, Miss Collins. Uh, my first question is going to be to the storyteller. All right. Um, does he look like he was attacked by something? Or like does this seem to be something that's been there since birth? Uh, it is definitely not a birth defect. Okay. As a matter of fact, make a Cthulhu Mythos roll. Oh, man. <laughs> that, uh, that's what? Only her, right? Only her. <laughs> the last thing I want to roll. Oh. What happens when you ask questions? I'll spend four luck. Uh, that is somebody who survived an attack by a hunting horror. The big nasty snake dragony thing. Mm -hmm. Just by the way, in real life, it must be absolutely and totally terrifying if you get attacked by a giant monster or thing, animal, and it's invisible and you can't see it. So even in the future, when you think about it, you don't can't define what it what ate you. Like yep. that must be horrifying. Um. We're at like an outdoor cafe or something? No, it's like a tiny little like ramshackle hut on the very outskirts oh. of the town. Okay. Um We are looking for something that the Carlisle expedition was here to break. When you mention the Carlisle expedition, you know, his eyes get wide, he gets like that thousand yard stare. Um, and he kind of very quickly kind of turns towards the hut. Um, 
and opens uh, opens the door, but he doesn't enter. Uh, and he says something in Arabic. Uh, Miles, you, you can make an Arabic roll just to see how much you actually get. Um, you don't get exactly what he says, Miles, but you do catch the word for mother. Like Mother Tucker or like? That's all Miles got. Uh, and then he motions. Uh, it's... No, go ahead, sir. Uh, I was going to say, and then he motions for you to uh, to step into the into the shack. Okay, I was just wondering if did he do a cadence thing when he emphasized the word mother like mom? Yeah, basically that sort of thing, yeah. I've had bad experiences with people's mothers. <laughs> uh, I, I believe he just called her to get her attention, so I go inside. There aren't any, like, cats or dogs or anything around, right? Uh, there are not. Okay, I'm fine then. Um, yeah, I'm if I'm going to go inside. inside. Pardon? Until you get inside. <laughs> cats as far as the eye can see. Uh, so inside, uh, there, there's this thing. It's very poorly lit, you know, like a little like kerosene lantern sort of thing. Um, and on the kind of like laying on this bed um, is this woman. It's impossible to tell how old she is. Uh, she kind of like motioned towards you. And as you step forward, you can see like both of her hands and most of her jaw have been burned away. Uh, I'm going to need sanity rolls. No! Oh, no. Oh, Alvin's going to keep his wits about him. Maybe. Oh. Evelyn is not. Holy shit. Oh, sorry, Alvin. <laughs> you go crazy. <laughs> I rolled a 97. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. Uh, so, uh, Shit. <laughs> Miles and Alvin, this is not the worst thing that you have seen today. <laughs> and the, within the scope of the last 24 hours, this woman would like, and literally like her hands and her lower jaw have been like burned away. Um, Evelyn, however, uh, can roll me a d10 and take three points of sanity loss. Oh. Doesn't the loss That's of sanity not... trigger your insanity? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if there are no animals around. I'm not sure what triggering at that is going to look like. People are animals. Oh, see, <laughs> you think it's just a phobia, but that's why I need you to roll a d10. Oh, okay. I might be uh, unavailable for seven. All right. Uh, so, yes. So, um, uh, Evelyn, as you see this, uh, the, this woman, and you've seen that, uh, that look uh, in her eyes... Uh, and she tries to say something, but that burnt away jaw makes speech impossible. It's just like this clacking of bone on, uh, like bone on teeth, basically. Uh, and you just, you just nope out and you run as fast as your hobbly little legs will carry you away. 
Yep, Evan looks like she's uh, having a bit of a panic attack. She doesn't seem to be able to breathe very well. Her entire body stiffens up. And then she clutches her cane white-knuckled as she struggles to get back outside. Um, but the for those of you who are inside... Uh, and uh, and composed, um, she kind of like motions. Um, she makes kind of like these kind of like awful, awful gurgling noises, and kind of points with the burnt stumps of her hands to the uh, to the corner of the hut. Um, her son kind of like rushes over to kind of like take care of her, thinking she's having some sort of fit or something. Uh, but as you guys look. Um, there's like a like a pile of like blankets and pots and bric-a-brac and a like a, a rush of basket uh, painted with a red symbol. Uh, you guys can give me a cult or archaeology tests. Sorry, a cult or archaeology? Yep. My occult is five times better than my archaeology. Oh no. <laughs> You're a cult of five, isn't it? It absolutely is, but um, I'm going to go after, like, as much as I would love to stay in this scene, I'm going to go after Evelyn. Okay. My responsibility. I'm going to try to make sure that she uh, doesn't lose herself in the desert. All right. I think that's too much luck to spend. Yeah, that is an all that luck. Um, so, yeah, there is a symbol painted on this basket, but neither one of you can identify it. Uh, but that seems to be what she's gesturing at with her stumps. And she's like gurgling and making this like horrifying kind of like screeching, crying, gurgling noise as she like gestures vehemently at the basket. I, I get up looking at her son and I walk over to the basket since I'm not sure if she's telling me to grab it or what. So yeah, once you grab it, she seems to kind of like collapse back into her bed. Um, and inside the basket, uh, there is a uh, like a slab of white stone, several inches thick, probably about seven by nine inches overall. Uh, looks like it was broken from a larger piece of worked stone. Oh, thank God. Uh, mm -hmm. And inscribed in it is a symbol looks very similar to the eye of Horus, with the like the head of an inverted onk. Uh, this very definitely is the other half of the eye of light and darkness. Okay, but do I find Evelyn? Uh, you do, because Evelyn does not hobble very fast. No, not fast at all. Evelyn is uh, muttering something under her breath. Not really like muttering, like talking low, but muttering like breathlessly whispering something to herself as she hobbles toward the car. She's looking around herself frantically. Um, and if she spots any kind of animal, she sort of flinches away and like takes several steps, you know, moves 10 feet away from whatever the thing was before she continues hobbling on. Evelyn, Evelyn, wait up. She pays him no attention at all. He's going to catch up to her and try to lead her towards the car, taking a wide berth on all the animals. He's going to help her navigate here. All the way, getting her back to the car.
at first she kind of flinches away from him. Um, but when she sort of realizes it's him, uh, she seems to start using him more like a human shield between her and any animals that are within her line of sight. I mean, I, I'm going to guess that Alvin's going to catch on. He's going to make shoo-shoo noises and kicking gestures at the animals try to get them to move out of the way okay. and uh, help her get situated and get back to somewhere. Um, and yeah, and uh, just so uh, Evelyn, basically you want to get as far away from Nuri as possible as soon as possible. Yep. Um, who has the car keys? Who drove here? Does the car need I, keys? I thought Evelyn was the driver. She usually is. That's why I'm wondering. Like, because we brought a translator, didn't we? Yep. I'm not sure if he just translates or if he's like the local guide. A uh, little of both. Alvin will take the keys and drive. Yeah, He's wait, Evelyn's, however, in the Evelyn's, car for miles and the translation. Evelyn's. I was going to say, you guys are going to take off without us? <laughs> no, I would imagine like Evelyn got in the front seat and just could not get the keys in the ignition. Her hands were shaking so badly. Yeah, she goes Until... in the back seat. With the You're putting her in the back? Okay. Um, so uh, back to some miles. You find this uh, this stone in the basket, um, and the woman has basically collapsed back into her into her bed. Um, did the basket have anything? In it? You said it had like blankets and such, right? It was like in a pile of like blankets and and bric-a-brac and stuff. Yeah. I would like to find something to wrap this in so it's not obvious what I'm carrying around with me. Okay, yeah. And then um, I'm going to, I don't know, try to do something nice. Like, I don't know, if she needs an extra blanket, because I don't know how cold it is. It is the desert at night. So just try to do something thankful for her. I might leave a few extra dollars with the boy. Um Otherwise, in my bad Arabic, thank them. Um, so yeah, so in in kind of like very halting, like he he speaks slowly since he understands your Arabic is not great. Uh, but he uh, he thanks you um, uh, and tells you that she was. She said she was waiting for someone. And then he kind of like gestures towards the, uh, the, the the stone that you're carrying and just kind of repeats, you know, she was waiting and gestures towards the stone. I nod and I as politely bow whatever local courtesy or custom is as a general good, you know, impression kind of thing. Um, and then he, um, when he when he shakes your hand, he kind of passes you um, like a like a crumpled up piece of paper. Um, kind of like kind of like pushes it like towards your chest, sort of thing. Um, and when you look at it, it's the same symbol that was printed on the basket. Does it look like an elder sign? Uh, no, it does not. <laughs> uh, and then he goes back to, to tending to his mom. Okay, I will go outside to reconnect with the other. Yeah, and you see they are in uh, the process of uh, getting into the car and uh, 
It's getting ready to head out. Alvin turns to Miles and says she's not okay. Who among us really is okay right now in the grand scheme of things? I mean, we're doing this so the rest of the world can be okay. Well, unless you uh, want to uh, leave her in a certain mosque, I'm not sure what to tell you. No, 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 no. We just got to get her home. To that, that almond kind of like snickers and laughs. Home. Huh. Well, the best we're going to do for home right now is a certain hotel. Yeah, let's go there. I hope you were more successful. I'll share when we're back at the hotel. Actually, no, when we're in the car, I'll share. Chris, I'd like to keep an eye out to see if anybody is um, taking interest in us or following. Okay. Uh, it does not seem like anybody is following you. Not not way out here in the pretty much the middle of nowhere. Yeah, well, who knows? Maybe there's a yeah a song masquerading as a pharaoh or something. Who knows? Possibly. Um, so yeah, so you guys can easily get back to the hotel, um, and I think we'll uh, I will call it there. You guys have uh, successfully retrieved the other half of the eye, uh, not without some uh, some casualties and some insanity along the way. Yikes! Now I will point out on the drive back. I'll unwrap the eye and said, "She gave me this." Oh, thank God. The real one. I believe so, because she, apparently her son said that she's been waiting for someone to come and take this off her. Chris, those characters are permanently gone, right? There's no chance of them recovering, right? There, yeah. Doctor, yeah, okay. Yep. 84 sanity loss? Right. 84. Uh, so, um, as I'm like, kind of like looking through things, there's a, there's a section on basically called God Fight. Um, so there is actually sanity reward for bringing down the Black Pharaoh. Really? There is. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an... Well, I don't think it would be enough for Dr. Carter. I don't think. Uh, no, it cannot possibly be enough to save Dr. Carter. Oh, that sucks. Uh, might be enough to save Jerome. And hilariously, he's the one who's no longer here. It is not enough to save Jerome. Basically, everybody gets back four points of sanity, which means you technically only lost 80. So even we get four points? Yep, it's four points for defeating the Black Pharaoh, but it's offset. It's a D20 for defeating the Black Pharaoh, but it's offset by the D100 you lose when the Harley Althotep himself shows up. So it is conceivable that you could come out ahead. Not likely, uh, but yes, uh, Doctor Doctor Carter uh, and uh, Jerome, um, unfortunately, have uh, fallen fallen victim to the mythos, and Evelyn is hanging by a thread, really. Yeah, yeah. What's her sanity now? Uh, Evelyn's sanity currently is thirty-seven. Does that include Is that our four? fantastic plus four? Sorry, did we just get plus four sanity? Yep. Yes, 
You have oh, that four yeah. buff for surviving. No. Uh, that brings her up to a whopping 41. And I'd like to correct you, Mark. It's not for surviving. It's for doing the right thing and killing the host. <laughs> <laughs> and surviving. Well, I mean, the ones who didn't survive. Yeah, I guess everyone survived. They just went crazy. Re recovered sanity for a dead body is pointless because it's dead. That's right. Um, and, and I'm not much better than you, Evelyn. I have 49 with that plus four back. So, uh, Although, do note that uh, both Evelyn and Miles, if you suffer even a single point of sanity loss, you will spiral into insanity again. Yeah, because we got to go get some counseling or something. Hey, can we do that at the mosque? Uh, you absolutely can. You can check yourselves in. But it's weeks of effort, <laughs> right? It's not just like... Oh, uh, it, is a, it is a recovery roll each month. Oof. Uh, we probably don't have time. Well, I mean, the eclipse is in boat ride. seven months, six months. Yeah, a leisurely boat ride. That That's plenty of time. Uh, when yeah, you when guys... we change... When we change continents, we hired a psychologist to come counsel us on the boat ride. Private care is better than sanitarium care. All right. Uh, so uh, folks can roll for uh, regaining their luck. We click recover luck points or development phase? Uh, recover luck points. I actually got some this time. All right. Woohoo! So did I. <laughs> All right, perfect. So uh, we will see everybody uh, next week, uh, possibly yeah. with a couple new characters. <laughs> Chris, yes. Weird question. Um, obviously, when fighting or facing off against the Dark Pharaoh, sanity is the number one concern. But was there a is there a play for him to actually kill us? Oh yes. Uh, if his turn and initiative come out, he uh, automatically hits with his energy beams for 20 points of damage. Automatically hit? Said, automatically hit. With an S? Yeah, he gets to fire one around. Ah, okay. Um, um, how, how much damage? Where do you take that? 20 points to your hit points. Uh, I'm trying to see where my hit points are. It's the really small number under your luck. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't survive even one hit. Oh. I got 13. <laughs> I think the hardiest 12. people probably have like 15 to 18 tops, I'm guessing. Oh, dear. Yeah, like 18 is a lot of hit points. Yeah. Is it based on your power stat? Uh, hit points are... Or your con? Uh, it's a combination of your con and your size. And your size, okay. Um, so, so yes, he he very much could have physically killed you, and in that case, it manifests as uh, like withering and and rapid aging and flesh melting. So, it's kind of a it's kind of a good time. Yeah. Good time. <laughs> yeah. Yikes! Holy shit! Uh, but uh, I'm wondering what's worse: twenty hit points of damage or losing eighty-four sanity a shot. Like, uh, well, if you if you take all of your hit points or more in a single hit, it is instant death. Don't roll any saves or anything; just dead, dead. So the the sanity loss because it's a die roll. It's potentially better. Uh, but D100 sanity loss is really bad. So we potentially got the best outcome. Great. Thanks. Yep. Good to hear. Yeah. Yes. Um, and like when it comes to a sanity roll, like when Evelyn like critically failed that last sanity roll there, you automatically take the maximum loss. So if anybody critically fails uh, uh, when like the Holy Oath Atop shows up, it's like, oh, 100 sanity loss. Yep, not a fan. Yeah, that's uh, a that's a really big number. <laughs> uh, but considering <laughs> you guys made this is Ugh. thirty three sessions uh, before uh, before any like 
really significant like long-term sanity loss or anything so that's pretty impressive i mean 33 is pretty amazing but yeah holy crap i have no plan for what's next but i will need access to the character uh, creation thing um if you go to the um uh i posted it in the in the discord the uh, the dolls house uh, I'll okay. post that one again. It's it's got an uh, it's got a character builder in it, and you can download it as a PDF, which is great. Uh, but they also have uh, almost like a library of investigators because when you make a character, you can save it, and then everybody has access to it. And there's like thousands of investigators kind of pre-made, um, so you can even just kind of go like, I'm looking for a 1920s investigator, just to like generate some ideas as to what you might want to do. <laughs> yeah, it's just that I don't like thinking about next character as long as the one is alive yeah <laughs> so i haven't given any thoughts so far <laughs> but uh i'm gonna i'm gonna check that no worries i'll um uh, i'll leave foundry up and i'll open up a blank character sheet and assign it to you okay thanks you your psychology all right i might be i might be doing some of dr carter's students or something like that i'm not, I'm not sure yet Try you to might tie in be someone doing new. some of Doctor Carter's students. Got it. Making don't don't making. You know what I mean. <laughs> All right. Well, have a good night, folks. Playing. <laughs>